how long the medication works, I don't know. But if I get four years, it's four years and I've been in the hub before. For me, the lowest point was when I discovered that he was contemplating suicide. That was the hardest part for me because he was such a strong person, you know, always fighting to, to move forward. And when he got to that point, I think that was the, the rock bottom, as, as some people would say. To serve as a Royal Marines Commando and earn the coveted Green Beret is an honour and a privilege. To become part of an elite fighting force and a lifelong brotherhood is what makes it so special. Like I say, I was very fortunate to do a lot of my career before I got ill. Um, from the jungles of Malaysia and Brunei to Arctic training in Norway to train Iraqi Marines and oil platforms in Iraq and two tours of Afghanistan. So I've, I've ma I managed to fit a lot in this short period and, and I'm very, very fortunate but very thankful. Well, my last tour of Afghanistan, I was um, based in Sangin. It was two days before I was due to fly home. I phoned the wife, I told her, yep, I'm back in Camp Bastion, I'm safe. I'll be home in a few days. And then literally the next day, I fell ill. And I was diagnosed with Q fever then, at the end of October uh, 2010. He wasn't given a very good prognosis back at the time, and I don't think it was meant to survive very long. It's hard to put into words how difficult it is watching them slowly deteriorate day by day, week by week, not just physically but mentally, watching how that changed him as a person. Having 24 hour care and people having to wash you and, and they're wheeling you into a, a bathroom and you're looking in the mirror and you're not seeing the person that you were. Um, the person that you thought you were. Um. Yeah, the, I don't think there are any words to really describe how difficult the journey has been. And it was going downhill, so we managed to get a house and, and get on the market again out of the Mary quarters. But within six months, we couldn't use the house properly. I was sleeping on the sofa for six months. Couldn't get up the stairs to go to bed. We were so disconnected before that. You know, Philip couldn't get upstairs to read the children books at night. He couldn't tuck them in. He couldn't just go and see what they were playing and... and... The charity at the time stepped in um, with Hasler Company and they said that they were going to build a house. Um... It brought us back together as a family. So having this home made us become homely again, if that makes sense. I can't say it enough. I really can't. Without the charity, we, I wouldn't be here. I'll be dead. I wouldn't be at a point where I'm able to walk again. Because they've, they've supported me in the last 12 years with everything from getting a wheelchair to housing to helping with Paralympics or the kids. I yeah, competed in Rio 2016 and Tokyo 2020 slash 21 now. And actually my, one of my favourite photographs is after the, the Rio Paralympics with, with three kids kissing me. It's just, you could see in their faces the, the difference it made. I suppose you've always had to have a challenge. Whenever you become disabled, everything gets put in front of you is disabled. So seeing friends of mine that are in wheelchairs and the devices that they were having to use. Why has no one ever designed something? Why and we are very fortunate to have the RMA, the Royal Marines Charity, because they're a lifeline. They helped start the wheelchair business and they said that they would help get it off the ground. So initially they gave us £60,000 to start the initial development for the chair to see where we could get. So if we can get to a point where you've got a 14-year-old kid on a bicycle and a 14-year-old kid in a wheelchair, we can change that stigma a little where the kid in the bike wants to have a go on a really cool wheelchair that's drifting around and climbing curbs and, and goes fast, then the day that I can see someone go down the street in one of the wheelchairs, it's all been worthwhile. And I think that that'll be a very emotional day. Um, I took it to the last Paralympics just to, to, to use myself, but to show, show around and 
we didn't get very many places about people chasing us down and stopping us. And when you're driving down the road in a wheelchair and you've maybe four people in wheelchairs trying to chase you down, shouting at you in different languages, it's a real vindication of, of we were doing the right thing. I'm very fortunate that with all the support that the RMA, the Royal Marines Charity has given me, they've been able to sort of find a way to get some new medic, I'll say new medication's been out since 1945, some medic, new medication for me. And from this year, I took my first steps. When I look back, it's all a bit of a, it feels like a bit of a dream or a nightmare all mixed into one because without all that support and all those different points in the journey, I wouldn't have got to where I am now. And I'm just very fortunate that I'm in this position now where I, I can look to the future. Where the future goes, I don't know. The one thing I do know is that with whatever I've got now, I need to help pay forward the support that I've been given. So whether it's at the dinner and, and helping to raise money for this amazing charity or other challenges or things in the future, um, it all needs paid forward. There just never are enough words that describe or express how proud we are of him. You know, as a father, as a husband, just pride isn't a big enough word.